Well, uh, Fabrizio is speaking now, and I'm, I'm in, in the in the same room with, with Matteo, and uh, I will start, and Matteo will, will continue until the end of, of the presentation. And uh, we we are both uh, uh, with uh, the University of Cagliari in, in Italy, and uh, I'm also in, involved in uh, ISGAN, and particularly I'm responsible for uh, Annex 3 that is uh, exactly about uh, cost-benefit analysis and uh, socio-economic impact of, of smart grid. And uh, this afternoon, uh, with this webinar, we uh, would like to give you, you some information about uh, what is going on in ISGAN regarding the topic, the important topic of uh, decision-making uh, related to, to smart grid projects. And uh, this is also a way to, to make a kind of advertisement. If you are interested to our activities in Isgan, uh, we are very happy to, to welcome you on board. But what, what, what is Isgan for someone that uh, maybe this is a brief outline of, of the presentation. As, as you can see, the first item in, uh, in, in, in the list uh, is about the Isgan. So, just few words about the ISGAN. ISGAN uh, is a strategic platform to support high-level government attention and actions for the accelerated development of, and deployment of mass clean and electricity grids around the world. It's a, it is an initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial, CEM, and it was organizing as the implementing agreement uh, for a cooperative program of smart grids. And so it's uh, also uh, and, and something that depends uh, from uh, on IDEA and the Energy Technology Network in particular. And the CEM is the only multilateral forum dedicated exclusively to the advancement of clean energy technologies and related policies. And ISGAN is the only global government forum on smart grids. And uh, about uh, uh, about the, the activities uh, of ISGAN, uh, as you can see in the slide, uh, we have uh, eight uh, annex uh, that uh, each one is responsible uh, to deal uh, with a specific topic. And so we have uh, annex one that is about the global smart grid inventory. We, we have uh, annex two that is about state studies related to smart grids. Annex three, that is the, the annex that I chair. Is the, uh, about uh, cost-benefit analysis and toolkits uh, for dealing with uh, cost-benefit and decision making. Then we have uh, Annex 4, Insight for Decision Makers, and Smart Grid uh, uh, International Research Facility Network, uh, it's about uh, facility and, and uh, facilities and laboratories. And then we have a Power and uh, Transmission and Distribution Systems, Annex 6, and Smart Grid Transition, Annex 7. And finally, Annex O8, uh, that is uh, uh, the Smart Grid Academy, the ISGAN Smart Grid Academy, that is uh, the organizer of this, uh, this webinar. And uh, just uh, to give you an idea of uh, how many countries and institutions are uh, now involved in uh, ISGAN, and uh, as you can see, uh, all the world is covered by, by ISGAN. So now I think that it's time to start uh, with, uh, with the presentation and just a few words about the, the context and the motivations. And uh, well, the smart green transition is uh, something that is re really a reality now. And uh, there are some key drivers. Uh, everyone knows that uh, we have an environmental and regulatory pressure for, uh, for smart grids. Uh, and uh, the market liberalization uh, is uh, is a reality in, in many countries, and the security of supply and quality of services are something that uh, we do uh, want to achieve in our systems. And uh, we, we don't have money for rebuild, uh, to rebuild everything, and so copper investment postponement and uh, using and exploiting at maximum level existing assets is an, another key driver for smart grid. And uh, we are uh, depending more and more from uh, renewable energy sources, and we want to do more in Europe and uh, in, uh, in, in many countries in the, in the world. There are so many programs uh, for increasing the level of uh, renewables. 
And another important point is that in order to manage uh, so much uh, uh, not uh, programmable uh, and dispatchable uh, energy sources, uh, we need uh, to add to the system a lot of uh, flexibility, much more than in the past, uh, and uh, we should uh, leave uh, the load following uh, uh, paradigm uh, towards uh, more modern and more difficult uh, generation following. Uh, without changing uh, our habits. And so flexibility with storage, uh, with uh, electric vehicles uh, that are another kind of storage, with uh, active demand participation are all uh, things that require uh, smart grid in, uh, in place. And so the challenge is that the complexity is increasing. Uh, we need to integrate effective, effectively uh, distributed energy resources, uh, and uh, we need a dynamic optimization of grid operation and resources. And uh, we should in incorporate in our systems uh, demand response. And for sure, we want to have self-healing uh, more reliable and more resilient uh, systems. Uh, and uh, we need to increase cyber security and uh, interoperability. And that means uh, that smart grid is really a complex uh, uh, topic that uh, requires uh, a holistic, uh, an holistic approach, and uh, so it is so complex uh, that uh, there is the need uh, of a huge amount of investment, and uh, so uh, this is the, the most important point for cost-benefit analysis. Uh, the, the, the question is how to allocate uh, in, uh, efficiently uh, the budget. For, uh, for innovation and for this market, particularly. The smart grids, as you can see here, uh, typically uh, have, uh, can uh, enable a lot of a wide range of services, and uh, those services have a high and significant social economic impact. And uh, so a wide range of impacts, a lot of uh, indirect and side effects, a lot of in intangible impacts. And uh, we have few data because we have just started. And we have a lot of uncertainty. Uh, so that means uh, that uh, not only monetary, monetary aspects are of interest. And let's think about uh, environment as a clear example of uh, something that is not really uh, only about uh, money, and uh, then we have uh, a key, the difficulties uh, to allocate the impact uh, and, and benefits. And quantify uh, with money all impact is not uh, always simple. Or if we try to do, we have to do uh, so many assumptions that uh, in, in some way uh, we change the accuracy of cost typical cost-benefit uh, analysis. And uh, finally, most important, uh, all these decisions uh, are to be made uh, under an increasing level of uncertainties, much more than in the past. I think that's another point to think about. Uh, which is uh, the scope of decision making is something uh, well known. Uh, well, we have to, uh, to identify uh, the best, or let's say the best option in a li list, uh, in a limited list of uh, design options, and so we have to assess the, the different uh, uh, options and the performances. So it's a, the question of matrix, how to measure the performances, and then we have to to find uh, uh, a good compromise uh, since uh, this. Uh, the decision making is not only about one stakeholder in, in the context of the smart grid. Uh, it's different uh, from a company. If you work in a company, you know exactly uh, which are the stakeholders. But if you are talking about smart grid, the stakeholders are many. And we have the, the society, we have uh, a lot of companies, uh, we have um, people, and uh, we have uh, politicians and, and governments and, and many uh, stakeholders. And uh, each of them has uh, different goals. And so we have to find uh, reasonable compromises uh, in order to uh, identify which is the best option. 
and uh, finally we can conclude that uh, when, uh, under the umbrella of Madrid we do need uh, effective tools uh, for complex decision making uh, problems in order to identify uh, where it is better to allocate uh, resources for development. And uh, one very well known uh, tool or methodology uh, for uh, analyzing uh, for decision making is the cost benefit analysis. Uh, cost benefit analysis CBA is one of the most acknowledged tools for assessing the financial viability of a uh, industrial uh, project uh, and uh, if we apply cost benefit analysis, well, uh, with CBA we seek for an optimal uh, resource allocation. In, in, uh, in particularly, we want to find a solution that uh, costs uh, less than the, the benefits, uh, and uh, uh, we should find uh, in this way we uh, seek for the most profitable investment uh, option. And uh, it's very easy to read because it's only uh, everything is about money. So if the, the money we spend is uh, less than the money we earn, we earn that uh, that alternative, that uh, project uh, is is good. And if I want to to do a ranking, it's quite easy to do a ranking because uh, the the, the most profitable uh, is in the first position, and then we can prepare a list according to the level of uh, of income we can uh, receive. Uh, it's very easy to to say, not to not too easy to apply in a smart grid context. And uh, typical uh, um, parameters that are used are the net present value for uh, the net benefit produced. It's very critical the internal rate of return, IRR, the discount rate value that makes the NTV equal to zero, and the cost benefit ratio, uh, that is uh, the, the ratio of the present value of benefit co uh, and cost. Uh, all the, these three indicators are the, the common output of, uh, of CBA. So these are these are in this slide you can see the typical steps of CBA target and cost and, uh, recognition, the cost and benefit quantification, modern monetizing and discounting, cost and benefit aggregation, and then finally you get uh, NPV, IRR, and CBR, and finally uh, you can also perform some sensitivity analysis if some of the uh, data in your calculation are uncertainty. Are uncertain, and uh, CBA is uh, has been applied for for many years uh, in in companies, and uh, recently CBA is used uh, also for uh, allocating uh, public money, and uh, there are many uh, regulatory uh, frameworks in in the world that. Uh, uh, require a positive CBA for uh, approving uh, a project. Uh, in Italy, for for example, uh, uh, cost-benefit analysis uh, is now applied uh, to investment in uh, the transmission system. Uh, the TSO, uh, if, if the TSO proposes a new investment, uh, the, the, the proposal uh, uh, should come with a cost-benefit analysis in order to justify the investment. So it's the same for smart meters, for, uh, smart meters. and uh, cost-benefit analysis uh, is really becoming uh, crucial for many uh, investments, in, particularly in, in, in power systems. And uh, well, since uh, CBA has been used for many years, and many specific uh, guidelines have been uh, uh, developed and, and uh, published by development bodies, and uh, you you can see that uh, uh, we can uh, uh, immediately see that uh, if we try to apply CBA for uh, very big projects that uh, affect uh, country in, uh, or 
large party of the country, uh, CDA has some uh, drawbacks and shortcomings. And the, the first uh, problem is uh, about the uh, quantification, the quantifying. Uh, intangible impacts are not uh, clearly quantifiable. And uh, so we can do only some qualitative uh, assessment. Monetizing, this is another point, uh, the monetization of, of everything of everything related particularly to smart is, is not that easy. And uh, uh, there is the risk of uh, misrepresentation. And discounting, uh, uh, discounting of in intangible impact uh, appears uh, unsound because uh, it leads to an increased burden on future generations. It's something that is uh, uh, it's really uh, happening now uh, because we are destroying our environment uh, and we are leaving the burden of that uh, on, uh, on the shoulders of the next generation. So something that is very difficult to deal with uh, a simple cost-benefit analysis. So cost-benefit analysis uh, is uh, very good for uh, Decision making applied in uh, applied in the private sector. Uh, in people is uh, involved uh, the, the customer. Uh, goods and services are exchanged within a market. Uh, tangible impacts are the majority, and uh, the investor target is simply uh, simple: uh, just uh, maximize the profits. And uh, if we try to apply a CBA, a pure CBA, to a public sector, and people are not customers, are citizens and are taxpayers, uh, good, uh, some goods and services uh, do, not, do not have uh, market, intangible impacts are not uh, eligible, and uh, uh, investor targets uh, is uh, maximize the efficiency and the effectiveness uh, of investment. Not, not the profit. And uh, key issues for applying in the context of market cost benefit analysis is to obtain an effective classification of impacts. And there is a high risk of double counting, and this is uh, very, very important to think about. And uh, we should uh, obtain a, a multiple number of feasible future scenarios. And another point is the uh, key issues is a uh, forecast, the forecast of uh, prices, particularly of new technologies, is not uh, very easy to, to perform. And uh, identify and consider the synergy of different smart grid assets is again another issue in uh, the application of cost benefits. And uh, finally, it's very difficult and tough to generalize methods and, and, general, and results on, on different counters. And uh, another way to deal uh, with decision making uh, is, uh, well, I say another way in, re in reality. There, there are some complementarities. But anyway, another way, way to deal with uh, decision making uh, is uh, uh, multi-criteria. Uh, Multi-criteria helps uh, decision makers to identify the best option among, uh, among a given set of different alternatives or design options. And uh, it's a very well-known uh, uh, methodology for complex decision making. Uh, encourages, uh, MCA encourages the common decomposition. Uh, it's very good uh, to understand and uh, to deal with the uh, conflicting uh, criteria that are very common in uh, complex uh, smart grid uh, projects. And tangible and intangible impact uh, can be uh, dealt with uh, simultaneously. And uh, also uh, qualitative uh, indicators can be used uh, with, uh, with MCA. And uh, we, we can uh, directly include uh, different uh, point of views, different stakeholders in the evaluation process. And uh, it, it is very good uh, for the application of probabilistic models. So this is uh, MCA. 
And uh, MCA is a very well-known methodology, and the, the main uh, uh, there are many, many different techniques that have been uh, developed, but uh, we can uh, try to uh, split into two uh, different uh, families. One is uh, the multi-objective design making MODM, uh, that uh, design a set of optimal solutions by minimizing the objectives. And the other one is multi-attribute decision making. It finds uh, the best alternative among an explicitly known set. And the steps for the application of uh, MCA and ADM is again target and context recognition, identify the alternatives under analysis, identify evaluation criteria, scoring of alternatives, weighting of alternatives, score and weight combination, uh, result analysis and, if it is necessary, and sensitivity analysis uh, with reference to the most uncertain and, and significant uh, elements of uh, the project. And uh, regarding the MADM, uh, you can see here a, a list of uh, different uh, approaches, the full aggregation uh, approach. FAAA, the outranking uh, methods, OM, and the goal aspiration approach. And uh, to, the, to the right, uh, the right column of this slide, you can see also some uh, uh, algorithms and, and, and tools and even software that can be used for uh, each, uh, for solving uh, decision making uh, with reference to, to each one of these. Uh, big families. The key elements of uh, multi-criteria and the uh, methodologies are the hierarchy for criteria, the performance matrix, and the stakeholder uh, value scale. The output of each of these criteria, performance matrix, and stakeholders value scale are all used by the MCA technique in order to find, to, to, yes, to, to prepare a ranking for a, a list of a limited list, finite list. Uh, this is a, a clear a difference between multi-criteria and multi-objectives, and this is about the number of alternatives. If you have a limited uh, list of options, then we are in the field of multi-criteria, and uh, multi-criteria analysis is capable at, at the end to give a classification and ranking of a, a list of projects. Well, cons of uh, MCA. Uh, MCA is not uh, oriented uh, to, to, to profit, and so no explicit rule uh, for obtaining uh, benefits that uh, uh, exceed uh, cost. The identified best uh, option, a design option, may not pursue with big improvements. And doing nothing principle might result as preferable. Subjectivity. Uh, is uh, directly introduced by criteria weights and qualitative appraisals of alternatives. And effective strategies for reject personal biases uh, need to be employed. Another point is the multiplicity of MCA, MCA and ADM techniques. Uh, there are so many that, is, uh, that uh, it is not that easy to identify which, which is the best uh, suited to the uh, application. And many of these uh, uh, techniques are very complex, very good for academic uh, exercises and, and researches, but uh, not so that easy to be used outside the academic uh, community. So some, uh, some gaps. Uh, in, within uh, Annex uh, 3, we uh, deeply studied uh, uh, TBA as a starting point uh, for decision-making applied uh, to, to smart grids. And uh, we have uh, 
prepared some reports and uh, if you are interested to uh, to know more more about uh, the, uh, our activities in Indian regarding the point of CDA uh, you are uh, really invited uh, to to surf the internet and uh, look for uh, our documents uh, that uh, we have uh, recently changed the the, the web uh, the website and the portal but we are uh, putting there all documents and reports and uh, so you can find uh, more details uh, more detailed documents on internet activity and uh, as you can see, we have uh, identified uh, with the cost benefits some gaps. And uh, cost benefit analysis applied to, to Smart Grid started with every. Every is uh, a pure application of, uh, of cost benefit analysis. And uh, f from uh, every, where there are some uh, interesting activities. As you can see, GFC, the European Joint Research Center, uh, changed a little bit uh, from uh, A3. And uh, as you can see then the, in, the, in the diagram, uh, it is uh, less quantitative than A3, since A3 is only, uh, again, based about money. And without and GFC, uh, tried to contaminate a little bit uh, CBA with uh, other uh, techniques like MCA. And uh, several methods applied are specific uh, for case studies. Uh, several other methods are general, and GFC and uh, APRI are examples of that. And uh, there are some methods that consider, it, consider only quantitative uh, criteria, and there are some others uh, that are try to move from quantitative to qualitative. And uh, some uh, application of uh, uh, decision making and cost benefit analysis, uh, some examples, uh, and uh, which is uh, clear is that uh, we need a large, large amount of input data for this kind of studies. And uh, the analyst, uh, high analyst know-how is very important. Uh, and uh, another gap uh, and weak point uh, is that uh, we have low replicability. And so it's very difficult to replicate uh, one uh, CDA uh, to, to one, uh, from one study to another one. And dif difficult to replicate on different contexts on, the, on, on different aspects. And also results are uh, difficult to be compared uh, from different frameworks. And uh, finally, in Annex 3, we have identified some, uh, some gaps for the application of uh, CDA in the smart grid context. Uh, and uh, these, those gaps are, are also good starting point for future research. And, uh, one point is that uh, the, we, we have uh, limited feedback from real smart grid projects, and uh, so it's very difficult uh, to, to get data for, uh, for studies, and uh, it's very uh, difficult the application in, uh, in, in different contexts. So this is just one point. Another point uh, is that uh, we do need uh, to include uh, something that, uh, that is not uh, easy to, uh, to be quantified. Uh, and another point is that uh, we should try to simplify the decision-making process. And so the, the result and the recommendation is uh, uh, to improve novel uh, methods based on uh, uh, CBA and, uh, and multi-criteria. And another, another interesting point, particularly uh, it is being stressed in, in Sweden, but it's very interesting, uh, is, is that uh, uh, when uh, we do a CBA, maybe we can uh, find that the project uh, is, is not uh, uh, convenient, but what is really, uh, is really what, is, uh, what could be really useful is uh, uh, Finding the way on uh, how to uh, identify what is uh, the, the weak point of the project uh, and uh, how can uh, uh, 
uh, reuse uh, that that study for uh, for, for uh, improving a project that, that is not really uh, good enough. And another crucial point is that uh, uncertainty and also regulation. Uh, how to deal with uh, uncertainty? How to deal with uh, regulation and uh, decision making? And uh, particularly the level of uncertainty is getting so high that the sensitivity analysis is, is not enough. And so we have to improve our methodologies on, on that. And I think that uh, this, is, uh, this was just to give you a, a picture of the main differences between uh, CBA and MCA. And now is the, the time to to go in uh, the second part of the presentation, and uh, that is about uh, the combined approach of, uh, of both techniques, uh, and also to see some uh, example of application. And so now the word uh, and the floor is to, to Matteo, to please, Matteo, you, you can start. Hello. Um, I'm Matteo, and I will uh, speak about um, how to combine MCA and CDA in order to have a combined approach for, for um, improve the smart grid uh, analysis. Uh, as, previously, as previously introduced, the CDA and MCA are tools for supporting decision making. And um, those tools are different because uh, they are uh, based on different uh, philosophies. As uh, you can, uh, can you see, uh, CDA has the main positive aspect, as the uh, main positive aspect, aspect um, the fact that it is uh, rigorous and rational, and uh, it is characterized by a formalized procedure. And also, it is uh, widely assimilated uh, since it is uh, has been used many different levels. And uh, but uh, um, has main negative aspect. Uh, PDA uh, seems uh, not so suitable for a uh, large uh, project uh, because uh, it is difficult and expensive to 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 be exploited and it requires a lot of data and uh, it is impossible to assess uh, soft effects. Uh, on the other side, MTA is uh, characterized by a very flexible approach and uh, does not, it does not require monetization of the impact. So it is possible to assess the soft effects and uh, thanks to uh, the, the weight of criteria, can um, uh, ensure the participation uh, of uh, stakeholders. But this, uh, um, this tool uh, can introduce uh, subject, an excess of uh, subjectivity, and uh, if it is uh, not well, um, okay. if it is not well um, formalized, uh, the risk of double counting is high. And as the professor said before, uh, it's lacking respect in the carbon uh, criterion, so uh, the, the um, uh, profitability of the best option is not uh, is not ensured. Um, but uh, these two approaches are not uh, um, mutually exclusive, uh, but they are uh, complementary tools uh, since uh, they can, can be combined in order to uh, have a monetary evaluation of uh, tangible impact uh, with a cost-benefit analysis and uh, uh, non-monetary uh, evaluation of uh, not monetary impact with MCA. Uh, in this way, um, with this combined approach, it's possible to reduce the respective lack by emphasizing the respective strength of uh, those methods. Um, in particular, in this literature, uh, these uh, uh, combined approaches uh, have been uh, analyzed, and there are two main uh, um, two main families. The first family 
the first family is say that the CBA can be considered as economic criterion of a handcase framework where CBA is strictly focused on tangible impact while MCA focuses on intangible impact. Uh, on the on the right uh, is depicted uh, another uh, approach that uh, combines MCA and CBA uh, that say that uh, uh, MCA can be used for select a subset of uh, interesting investing, investment options, while CBA uh, can be used uh, then for um, evaluate the economic viability of the selected option. Uh, now I will uh, present um, MCA CBA approach for smart grid assessment that uh, has been um, has been developed uh, within the Hanex3 uh, activities, and uh, this uh, combined approach uh, complete with the international guidelines on project assessment as uh, the guidelines devised divided by JRC. Uh, that uh, try to um, extend uh, extend the CBA analysis of every uh, by including uh, some um, technical uh, impact on Marbury. and uh, the the approach that uh, we we present uh, uh, formalizes uh, those uh, guidelines, uh, introducing the evaluation of on three different areas, uh, the economic assessment, the smart grid deployment merit assessment, and the externality impact assessment. By combining these three evaluations, uh, we, we can obtain an overall evaluation of each project on smart grid. And um, in more detail, uh, the decision-making problem of identifying the best uh, option is, uh, is decomposed uh, by a hierarchy of criteria uh, in which uh, the three branches are independent and these branches are uh, similar since uh, they have um, more than one layer and uh, each layer is defined according to the principle of abstraction. And uh, uh, the first branch is uh, focused on the uh, evaluation of monetary impact and um, the lower level of the branch is um, characterized by uh, the terminal criteria. Uh, in, in this case, the terminal criteria are the uh, economic performance indicators that are produced by a CBA. Uh, so the net present value, the internal rate of return, and the cost benefit ratio. Um, so uh, this framework requires a cost benefit analysis of the alternative under analysis, under, uh, the, uh, under analysis. and this CBA can be uh, made um, according to international guidelines such as EPRI or, or JRC. And, uh, Obtain a positive CBA evaluation may represent a requirement for defining a um, limited subset of projects to be uh, further uh, analyzed by the MCA framework. The second branch is uh, assess the uh, contribution toward the market realization given by each project option. This, uh, this branch. Uh, on the basis of the GRC well lines uh, in, in, in which are defined uh, several policy criteria that uh, are, um, are uh, that are um, that represent the uh, some general benefits for the energy sector defined by the European Commission. And uh, each policy, policy criteria is related to, uh, is related to several uh, key performance indicators that are the terminal uh, criteria of, of the branch. And um, it's worth noting that this evaluation is offset based since uh, uh, only the predicted effects of the, of the project ocean are evaluated instead of the technical future of the infrastructure. And this is uh, something that uh, uh, is. Um, that is derived from uh, JRC guidelines. Uh, and uh, in this slide, you can see the six policy criteria and uh, uh, 
and this will act as and the related key performance indicators, uh, for example, uh, the security or and quality of supply can be uh, um, evaluated by considering uh, uh, five KPI and, uh, for example, the voltage quality performance. The third branch uh, assess the externalities uh, produced by the, the project option and um, it is organized uh, in two layers. In the upper layer, we have uh, thematic areas that are useful for uh, group uh, different uh, single impacts and uh, the amount of the alternatives on uh, I measure uh, the qualitative and quantitative index that are related to each single impact. Um, it is assumed that the second level criteria are mutually dependent, so each single impact can influence uh, other thematic, more than one thematic area. Uh, now uh, I will uh, introduce a case study uh, where we uh, use the MTA CDA framework for analyze uh, some distribution green planning alternatives. So uh, we, we study a set of uh, active distribution network planning options that have been devised, devised uh, for um, using a multi-objective algorithm and um, each of uh, these planning options uh, consists in uh, traditional network reinforcement and in seeking a sizing of distribution and energy storage as non-network no, no uh, 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 no, no solution. Uh, each alternative has a time horizon of uh, 10 years and the topology of the network is considered as fixed and uh, for each bus we considered a load growth rate of 3% and um, Operation as be evaluated by a probabilistic uh, load flow. Um, we uh, the, the the hierarchy of criteria previously previously introduced is general. Then we uh, we have to um, particularize it for fit with the decision making problem at hand. So in this case, we should to have uh, just one economic criteria that is the, the net present value that has been considered by a particular CBA uh, that uh, encompasses uh, only network reinforcement cost for uh, line and substation upgrading, the cost of uh, relative power exchange with the transistor system operator, and the cost of distribution of uh, distribution energy storage device. So this is the investment for by batteries and for operating. And the second branch uh, also has been uh, um, has been uh, modified. We found three policy criteria with the six related KPI. So the first policy criteria is related to network connectivity and access to all categories of network users. And it is measured by the KPI uh, 1, uh, operational flexibility provided for dynamic balancing of electricity in the network. The second uh, policy, criteria, policy criterion has been evaluated by means of four KPIs. And so the security and quality of supply has been evaluated uh, by combining the performances of the alternative on stability of the electricity of the system, of the electricity system, the, the duration of the interruption and the frequencies, so the frequencies of uh, interruption per customer and the voltage quality in terms of voltage variation. The third the policy criterion um, concerns the efficiency and service quality in electricity supply and grid operation. And the KPI is the level of losses in distribution network, in the distribution network in this case. And so this is the final hierarchy. And um, we assign uh, the unequal weight for the two branches. So the economic evaluation has 
the same uh, the same uh, relevance of the with uh, paradigm and um, uh, we evaluate uh, the weight of each uh, terminal of each terminal criterion uh, according to the hierarchical composition principle by giving the same relevance or on criteria that uh, belong that belong to the same level. We have in this slide the uh, performance matrix. So each KPI is uh, a, a key performance indicator. So uh, on the right, you can see the formulas that we use for evaluate each uh, each variable uh, that uh, you can find in this matrix. We have five alternatives. The alternative one is the baseline scenario, and the alternative five is the alternative that uh, has the higher net present value, and. Uh, you can see in the second part of this uh, matrix is related to K performance indicators. Uh, you, you can find in this slide the, the formula, so I, I will be fast here. Okay, and this is the, the result of the evaluation. We use um, a methodology uh, that combines uh, uh, the principle of hierarchy, analytical hierarchy process, uh, and uh, and by automating, auto, auto, automatizing it, and we obtain these results where the alternative A5 is the um, the best one because it achieves the higher overall score uh, when both branches have the um, the same uh, relevance, and uh, we uh, in in this. Uh, Second table, you can see that uh, uh, the partial scores. Uh, you can see that the A5 has the higher economic score, while it's the alternative A4 that has the higher uh, smart grid merit score. And um, by means of a sensitive analysis on the criteria weight, we uh, show that when uh, uh, the, um, the relevance of the economic uh, uh, branch is uh, uh, less than uh, 0 0.24. Uh, the best alternative is the alternative uh, A4, while uh, otherwise the best alternative is uh, the alternative A5. This, is, um, this uh, shows how it is important that a uh, government body uh, decide uh, which are uh, the, the the relevant uh, issues of uh, of uh, of its uh, its size. Okay, and here uh, this is a brief uh, um, uh, a brief. Uh, uh, um, Description of three um, real uh, cases of uh, cost-benefit analysis and multi analysis combined. Uh, for example, uh, it, it, these two methods combined have been used by the uh, Italian regulator for uh, understand when uh, remunerate the source for operate uh, for operating storage uh, for network issues. Uh, multi criteria analysis has been used for evaluate uh, smart grid demonstration projects in uh, China and Singapore. And also uh, within the annex three, uh, we uh, develop a, a start a case um, an investigation about the Italian smart metering infrastructure. infrastructure. Okay, now I can, I will conclude um, that uh, uh, smart grid generates a wide range impact, impact which outclass the power system borders. So a new assessment approach for properly consider uh, Considering the potential of mass of smart technology and their access on society is required. 
Uh, a joint NCA CBA approach uh, cannot clasp the weaknesses of both methods and uh, can emphasize the respective plans. Uh, MCA and CBA um, framework allows decision makers to assess impact on different areas, assess monetary and in intangible impact together, reduce data requirements for the assessment, and promote an active participation of stakeholders. So, uh, develop automatized CBA MCA tools allows to analyze easily and track uh, large sets of planning options. And the future work on this topic are a lot because we are just the beginning and for promoting smart grid we need a simple and shared framework for project assessment in order to uh, encourage the comparison of projects among different regions in the world. So, and we need data sharing about smart grid initiatives and uh, we need to in, in, improve the technical coverage of uh, the use of these assessment frameworks. We need to um, better consider uncertainties scientists and to develop common feasible scenarios. And um, finally, we need to find the best uh, um, uh, an effective strategy for reduce uh, subjectivity in the analysis and, um, and uh, reduce uh, in this way the uh, personal uh, biases that can be introduced in the waste elicitation process. And this is the, the reading, the, bibliogra the bibliography that you can, if you are interested in a deeper uh, knowledge.